Hello people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bina Kerekebuna. If you're new here, I can see that I have so many new subscribers. So you guys are welcome to the Bina Bandwagon. I think I call it a bandwagon. <laughs> you guys are welcome to the Bina Boat where we say to however direction that we so please. But I am a YouTuber based in Bayelsa State, Nigeria. I vlog about faith, travel, and lifestyle. You probably might be here because of my, my travel chronicles, my travel vlogs. You're welcome either way, whatever means that you're here. Hey, how you doing? Happy New Year. And um, yeah, I'm talking about my Ghana travel chronicles. Yeah, that video has has, has been over a thousand views, so I'm guessing I did something good with it. So you guys, thank you for watching. Like, I think I just want to thank you guys for all the love on my channel this past weeks. It's been it's been tremendous, and I know it doesn't like it doesn't one thousand views might not mean much to a lot of people, but it means a lot to me. Especially within less than a month, one thousand views is is big, it's huge for me. So thank you to everyone that has watched, everyone that has shared my video, everyone that has commented, liked, or done whatever to support this channel, everyone that has subscribed. Thank you. I don't want to ever get to that point where I feel like growth on YouTube is is insignificant anymore. Like for every milestone, for every growth, I really want to still be humble enough to say thank you. So like you guys should always keep me grounded and keep me in check so thank you for the growth thank you for all the love so far enough of my thanksgiving let's continue from where we stopped in our last story time you guys seem to want to hear the remaining part of the gist i got comments and i should say the remaining part of the gist so here i am part two of my trip of my three-part series my of my ghana chronicles let go so now we are in togo yeah because the whole carrying the bag of defecation and poo, -poo thing was from Benin Republic to Togo, so I crossed the border of Benin to Togo with that sack of whatever. Mm -hmm. Now we are in Togo, and um, it was it wasn't that hard. I wanted to buy something that I didn't see. I mean, I wanted to buy it, but I was calculating my money at the time. It was um, the Togo traditional piece, very nice piece. It wasn't even that expensive, but I didn't know how much would like really take me and get me into Ghana, and I didn't want to start spending so much until I get to Ghana. So I didn't buy it, and I started looking for that clothes in Ghana. I didn't find it. So if you're ever in Bennett to Togo border and you see it, I will probably put a picture if I can. Guys, please buy it for me. God bless you as you do so. Amen. Now me Togo got into a taxi again that was taking us to Aflao, right? Me, my sister, and some other passenger. We're going to this thing was taking us. Did you was that another passenger? Okay, yes. We're going to Aflao now. I think this ride was longer than the first one. I think the um, um Togo border to Aflao um border thinking was was longer we shall go to them me again seeing buddha i'm saying okay i'm supposed to walk through right and um yeah they're like um i'm coming as a cockroach there's a cockroach in my office let's just continue just so um they're like one the taxi had stopped us at the flower but i wasn't like um do we have anybody that's crossing us i'm like why do i need someone to cross me it's not ghana it's not a flower it's not i'm just going to go there like the borders are closed that's a i say um okay so what can we do they said okay i can but I, I i know that i asked that okay since the borders the borders are closed where do we get our passport stamps where do we get our stamp and they're like there are no immigration officers there are no custom officers there's nobody to stamp your passport i say okay so how do we enter into ghana and they're like, but there are people that will take you across for a fee. I mean, these people are out there. They are like, they are pricing with you like it's tomatoes. Like, how much do you want to pay? This is like that's that's how it was just business for them. I mean, I was just like, uh, uh, I've never had to go through any country by negotiating at the border. <laughs> okay, maybe because I've never gone through any country by land. But hello, hello, <laughs> it was weird. Though. We shall negotiate a fee. That's how we hopped on a bike, me and my younger sister, because we were not carrying load. It wasn't that much of a big deal. Bap, bap, bike, vop. And that's how they carried us across. Them. This is thing I'm telling you, I put like film. Fine, you. Vop, 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 vop. One small gate. Vop, vop, vop. And me, yeah, I, I usually like to do things by the book. Like, I'm that kind of by the book person. So when things are done haphazardly, I'm, things are just done, and I'm like, <laughs> sorry, what's going on? I don't i don't i cannot be a criminal i don't know how to be a criminal i don't know how to be illegal i don't even know how to comport myself or sneaking into things like i have such i have such an extravagant personality that if you have to now put me in a box or make me be timid because i'm doing something illegal it doesn't go down well with me like so 
I think I was, I was really shouting at the bike, um, bike man at some point, like, how far, guy, what's going on? What, what, what's that? He's like, calm down, calm down, don't worry. Eh? I was not coming down, I was not looking at how everything was unfolding. Eh? 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 And before you know, that's how we, it's like we dodged. <laughs> that's how we dodged into Ghana. I'm not, and this is a disclaimer right now, I'm not an illegal person. I'm not an illegal immigrant. I would never do something knowingly. I would never do something illegal knowingly. Like if I had known from the onset that Abghana border was closed, I would not even have gone for that trip. If CM because I have sharp mouth, because I have sharp mouth, I always like to be on my right. So if I know that I cannot talk as much because um I probably did something wrong and then I would not do it. Because I like I like to talk, I like to be on the right. That's how we have not entered inside Ghana. We are that flower. And the original plan was to get to Accra because our family friend is in Accra. I mean, the younger sister of the person we went to stay with in Kumasi. She lives in Accra. So the plan was to get to her house in Accra. And then the next morning, we would um, take from her house to Kumasi. That was the plan. But all we were passing through with the bikes. I asked one of them. I kept saying, Accra, 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 Accra. So I, I asked the bike, the, the boss man that was loading for Accra. Um, how much? And then he said fifty-five. I think he said no, about fifty, fifty Ghana cities. So I was like, mm, okay, maybe, maybe not. So we moved further, and then we saw these long, luxurious buses that were going to Kumasi direct, and that was for six, sixty-five. That was sixty-five Ghana cities. So the difference, um, difference between the Accra and the Kumasi was so little, and I'm like, there's no point paying to Accra and then paying another, say, fifty again in the morning to Kumasi. It didn't make sense. If I can just pay sixty-five direct, but I will get there. In the wee hours of the morning because right this was around i got to Ghana around like five o'clock and the luxurious bus was going to leave around 7 30. so we're going to get to ghana get to get to kumasi say four ish in the morning which wasn't a problem because the buses were quite comfortable it was ac bus it was it was just really laid back at night so i said okay you know what let's just pay to kumasi direct instead and get there at the wee hours of the morning so we called our guardian and she was like yeah that's a good idea that's, those buses are good, they are safe and they are comfortable, we'll be fine, we'll just get here in the morning, have our bad sleep and then probably start touring later in the day. Sounded like a very good plan. So we were on the bus, we, uh, that's when we bought Ghana Jollof, we ate, we bought our SIM card, changed from our Nigerian SIM to Ghana SIM. I think a lot of people didn't even notice that I was on the road for that long because it felt like I was online. I was, I was online and I was posting um, things till we left the shores of nigeria and then from that semi border to ghana was about six hours i think because yeah or less okay that was probably around six hours or less really or, le or less it's not it's not that far from nigeria to ghana it's not that far by road really so a lot of people didn't even notice that i was out of the country because i got to ghana around five and i changed my ghana sim and i was back online it was like afternoon to evening just like someone puts enough their data People didn't even notice us out of the country. So now I'm in Ghana, I bought Ghana SIM, I put in the phone, we're good. Um, boss lives by um, 7.30, we, no, we didn't even freshen up. What We just ate, relaxed, and then the bus started leaving. We're not driving, no. Driving, 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 driving till about 10. But we stopped here yeah, till about after 9, yeah, after 9 ish. We stopped at some place and then the um, military men came, they checked the bus, checked the bus, checked the bus, and then they moved, they moved again. So, in like 20 to 30 minutes, at this point, we were already sleeping. Time was about to 10. Yes, yeah, so it was around 10. My sister and I were covered, rapper, and we were sleeping in the bus, knowing that we'll get there in the morning. Do you get? So, these military men came and then they were marching guys out. It was mostly men. They were mo mostly, and the thing is, not to profile anybody or anything, but this. Men, um, they look, um, you know how um, pictures of all these um, Boko Haram people that we see on the news. That's how these people were looking. A lot of them, a lot of them looked like that. So when this army men kept on bringing them, I bring them at me. I was like, ah, I better go. If Boko Haram this was when they remove them, I didn't even think I was going to be called out. I don't know what gave that man. I don't know what gave us it. I think it was our rapper because. Our, lap, our rapper was Lemon, my, that's the, my mom's rapper that my younger sister has inherited. It was quite flashy. So, I don't know if it was, but because it wasn't a Ghanaian piece, he somehow just knew that we were not Ghanaians or something like that. So he was like, so when the, he got to our seat, he was like, um, where are you from? Where are you from? And my younger sister was speaking three to him because she speaks three. 
tweet, 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 tweet. And that's why I was speaking cheating because she speaks fluently. And um, he was like, I didn't, I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you because she kept on, no, when he asked her where you from, she kept on, told, told, she told him we we're going to come and see. She was speaking in, she was speaking in Ghanaian language. And I was like, I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that with a mean face. So I said, where are you from? I told her, just tell him, just tell him. So she told him we're from Nigeria. He was like, come, get down, get down, get down. So when we got down, we got into the office and then these immigration officers were asking the guys that they brought down to give them a certain sum of money. Like I said, this video is not to call anyone out. It's just me doing my whole story time on my YouTube channel, just telling my own personal experience. So no, no, it's not, it's not, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not reporting anybody. It's just what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. So they're asking them to give them a certain sum of money. And so people were just giving them and then going back into the bus, going back into the bus, going back into the bus. And then when he got to me and my sister, he was like, where's your passport? Where's your passport? I think they were asking for passports and those people didn't have passports. So that's why they were paying that sum of money. So when they asked for our passport, we were like, ah, it's passports we have now. We now brought, as naively, we brought out our passports. And um, he checked and saw that there was no stamp, there was no Ghanaian stamp. And he was like, so when did you get into the country? Why is there no Ghanaian stamp on your passport? And you're like, um, okay, so what can we do now? I mean, because I feel like we had immigration office, so what can you do for us? Like, we should give him, he was calling five times the money he was collecting from other people. Like, I could hear when he was telling other people to give him money. He was not telling me and myself to pay five times the money, so I'll pay five times for myself. I'll pay five times for my younger star. Five times what they were collecting from other people individually. I'm like, eh, sir, I didn't even have an issue. Okay, maybe my tone went high a bit, but I'm like, okay, so if I'm paying this money, am I getting the stamp? Because like we said, like let's just establish the major reason why I went by road was because I wanted multiple stamps from multiple countries. So right now I don't have the Ghana stamp. Yes, I'm in the wrong. Okay, I'm about to give you a certain sum of money. Are you going to give me the stamp seeing as you're an immigration officer? I have sharp mouths. I'm sorry. That's why I said um that I should sit like I'm not ready. Me and my sister should sit down. And let me tell you, me and my younger sister him. Our mouth is like this, all of us, not all of us, but like me and my younger sister, we are very alike. Our last born, our mouth is like blade. So when they kept on saying that we should sit down there and that we are not ready, now they're talking about us giving them money, I'm asking about stamp, how they me, da, 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 da. I'm like, so wait, I'm going to just give you this sum of money that you're collecting less from that I'm just going to give you some of money, and you're not even going to give me this stamp. What if this thing hooks me later again in town? What if some immigration officer walks up to me and asks me for my passport and says that there's no stamp, so I have to pay another set of money to that guy? while i'm with you here and if you're an immigration officer man might as well just stamp my passport right so that's how they kept me and my younger stand here that we are not ready so other people paid 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 paid, paid, paid and then they entered back into the bus our boss was now waiting for us this is a very big boss i don't know i don't know probably a hundred people they then our boss driver now came so people from our boss now came and they were not talking to them they now asked us that we should pay the money should pay see if they had agreed to a negotiation i probably would have negotiated but at that point, I didn't even have enough Ghana cities on me. I didn't have Ghana cities. Because I didn't. I traveled with Naira. And I had not changed all my Naira at this point. And for the most part, most of my money was in my bank account. I had two cards with me that I was like, okay, because I can withdraw with my Nigerian card in Ghana. I don't need to be traveling with that much cash. So I, I just put my money in my in my different accounts. And I was going to be using them with my ATM card. That was the plan. I didn't even have that much cash. So quite frankly, I did not have the money they were asking for. With me and you, I didn't have it. So I kept on telling the man I didn't have. I didn't have that kind of money. If he had said, okay, so what do you have? Like, come to it, come to a compromise. But you just come and say, you're not ready. Don't worry, you're not ready. You're not ready. We are sending you back to Nigeria. You're going to be deported. You're going to be repatriated. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it's Ghana. It's not like I'm in Dubai. Hello. <laughs> you're going to threaten me with repatriation in Ghana, guy. Oga, Ogbeni, do your worst. Eloza, Eloza, do your worst. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have money. I'm not moving an inch. I'm not, ah. Me and my said, that's how we both face. We're like, nope. We're not doing anything. Our um, bus driver came. They were begging. They're like, so you push your van and something now. You push your give you something. I'm like, are you hearing what he's saying? That, he, that we are going to, we are going to be repatriated. We are going to be arrested. We are going to be um, um, prosecuted. They're going to hand us over to the police. You don't threaten me, fam. I, I hate threatening, eh? Ah. See, too many things like don't try to see me. If you tell me that you do this, you do it. Or more, you have to do that thing. You do it to your worst. Me, I can be. I have coconut head. I have coconut head. So if you're not telling me that you're ah, trust for what? For what? 
because of money that you're collecting from people. And you want to collect higher from me, and I'm saying I don't have it. You're not threatening my life for what? That's what I told your girl owner. You might as well do his worst. I said that because I'm not in a hurry to anyway. I'm going to my family friends' house. If you just send me back home, it's not my country I'll go to. I'll go to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I'll come back to Nigeria. It's not that much of a big deal. It wasn't that much of a big deal to me at all. So, Oga, do your worst. And me, when I'm in trouble, I don't like calling people. I only like to share testimonies. So when things are going bad for me, you would not hear about it. Like, I don't I don't call people and tell them that this and so thing is wrong and so and so thing is wrong. I call you after I've fixed it. And I feel like it's a blessing because I always feel like I, I can sort myself out. I always feel like I got me. I always feel like, don't worry, it's fine. Be nice, you. Now you, now, how far you go survive? You know that kind of thing. So I don't call people when when I'm having problems. But then my younger sister went ahead to call her my god. And she has a number of hearts because she lived with her for so long. This, this was the person that was taking care of her in Ghana. She has a number of hearts. So she just dialed her number and called her. We've been arrested by the Ghanaian immigration and we have been, we have been in Uganda. We are here now. Come and see that girl. Ah, I felt so bad for her. She kept on calling these people. She kept on calling us that she wants to speak to them. Nobody wanted to speak to her. Like I'm saying, this is a fellow Ghanaian citizen wanting to speak to the Ghanaian immigration. They didn't want to pick up the phone. They didn't want to take the phone. So what me I do is when I go close to them, I just put the phone on last week and, and I'm like, she's speaking three and three and she's talking to them. They refuse to tell the phone. I was like, don't worry, your last week I just keep talking and I'll put the phone close to their ear. <laughs> I don't get sense. <laughs> I would even close to them. What I would not do, and this thing was not my problem. I would just make sure that I'm standing next to them. The phone was the last week, and the phone was close to them. That's what I did. And she kept on talking to them, talking. I'm not sure she slept because she kept on calling like every hour. Like, okay, that she's willing to pay the money. What are they asking for? She's willing to pay the money. That she just let her people go. And this is that we, are, that we we didn't know that the borders were closed. That we are just coming to visit her. Please, that they should let us go. And my sister, your bone. We are these stubborn children. <laughs> Have sense. <laughs> they said, because it's like you guys don't know the, the gravity of what you've done. This is illegal immigration. This is legal migration. You're illegal immigrant in, the, in Ghana. You're this is, and you're, we are sending you back. To me, you know what was annoying me here? You kept on saying that you're sending you're sending you're sending me back to Nigeria like Ghana was gold. <laughs> I mean, sorry, this is not to talk down on Ghana. I mean, I love Ghana. I do love Ghana. I appreciate it. I enjoyed my time in Ghana, but you don't threaten me like that now, eh? It's not, it's not USA. I mean, we are not blessed with the UK. I mean, Ghana, I just came for this. It's like I even came to school. It's not like I came for anything so important. It's not like I came for a million dollar contract. I just I just went there for Christmas. I just went to Flange or to your Flex. And you're there that you're sending me back. Oh, God. I mean, when is the flight? I hope you are going by flight. When is the flight? In my mind, I'm like, it's like, you know, this is not a big deal to me. Oh, but that our guardian was so worried. She kept on calling and calling and begging. Like, oh, I felt so bad for her. I was not telling my sister, why did you call her now? Because my sister was like, ah, she's not going to sleep this night. Or that. She's going to be so stressed wherever she is. So she's not going to sleep. I'm like, so you know that she can be stressed about things like this. Why did you call her? Like, ordinarily, within me and you, we go sort ourselves out for you. We go set soon. Nothing will happen. I believe it. I knew, I knew inside of my stomach, inside of my heart. Nothing will happen. No, nothing. Nothing will happen. So they kept us there. Long story short, they kept us there, and um, they moved us from the inside office to the outside office. We're sitting like the, the outside. As I'm, as I'm talking to you, more buses were coming, stopping. They were bringing down people like that. It was like business. As this I'm saying, only CC, cash up, load down. Hey, 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 Yahoo boy, no do pasta. I said, Yahoo boy, no do pasta. If you see what I was saying, I was just saying. Buses upon but luxurious so small low. it is see that bus as they were stopping these officers were going in doing their rounds bringing down hundreds of people collecting a certain amount of money from them the, those one around will go, the next one will come we were there from and from that 10 o'clock till morning because at some point our boss had waited for like maybe 20 30 minutes so they had to leave and that is we didn't have money to pay so it's not like see if somebody had told me that okay let's rescue you guys let me bail you and then you give me the money when you get into town i wouldn't have minded but no everybody was like people should find them something that you should give them something you should give them the money that they're asking for that. i'm like i don't have it i don't have it if you have it give the i don't have if i if i if i had it i probably would have given because Especially I don't like spending money. I also don't like getting into trouble. So I probably would have, but I also hate pride. But that's 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 not the point. But I didn't have, and then our then our boss they like they not dropped our things that they were going. I'm like drop them. That was my own. What's my own? But you're not going to leave without giving my transport. Fee. I feel my transport. Fee. I'm not even gone half of my journey. So give me my transport back. 
Yes, I went and I collected my transport back from them. Mm -hmm. I collected it. They collect me and my staff's transport, and the money we paid, they gave us back to keep putting things in my pockets. I was not chilling inside of that immigration office and waiting for whatever I want to happen to happen. If they're going to send him back, let them send him back. I was ready. And that's the thing with me. Like, I can be so rigid. I can be so... Like, when I do things, when I make decisions, I can be so stiff about them. Like, I just damn the consequences. But, like, do, do what you... Do what do your worst. I, I make decisions with my whole consciousness that this decision might have consequences. And I, I'm like, damn you. Damn the consequence. Whatever wants to happen should happen. It's not a good character trait. But it is it is what it is. So even times when um I have made wrong decisions and I've suffered the consequences for it, I own up to it. I'm like, yes, I made that decision and this is the consequence. This is the this is the lesson I'm learning from this. That's what I do. I don't I don't blame my circumstance or my the result of my decision on um um anything. I don't blame it on um, people or a uh, so and so person made me do it. I did it because of this. When I make decisions, I make it with my full chest. When the consequences come, I'm like, yes, I own up to it. So me knowing that me, I was going to be sleeping in that in that immigration office till the next morning, and whatever was going to happen was going to happen. I'm like, I'm doing this with my full chest. And I'm doing it with all consciousness. I wasn't. There was no iota of remorse. There was no iota of guilt. There was no iota of anything. I was just there. Right? Whatever. The only person I was feeling bad for was my family friend that was in Kumasi that couldn't sleep because she kept on calling every hour. I felt so bad for her. I really wish my younger sister had not called her because she couldn't rest. Meanwhile, where we were, we were just like, we were just chilling, sitting on a bench with the police officer, with the um, military men. We were sitting, sitting outside with everybody and we were just, it's not like we were in chains or they blocked us in one room. We we're not locked. We we're just outside. It was an open space. So we we're just there. There were benches. We, were just, we just sat down. We would retire. We lie down. We get up. We sit down. There was a pavement. We sometimes we spread our apart. We lie down. We sleep. They were playing music. They were playing music with their um, uh, speaker. We we'll danced. Uh, those food. I felt they were so mad at us. You know when you you, you are yeah you are holding people back. You feel like you're punishing them. But they're just they're just having a time like that. And that God, I traveled with Dobra. My gosh, because she's all vibes. She's all fun. We're just catching fun. We were laughing so hard. We were just in when they were playing Nigerian songs. We're not coming back. Best, best, best. If you see us, we're so happy. And I bet you the military men were so mad. Like they're like it's like if you don't know where you're, they will not be speaking to me. My gosh, I was translating to me. Like people don't know the, the graffiti of the offense that you've committed. My mind, I'm like, I'm like, like whatever. <laughs> so we were there. We were there till morning. Yes, we, we we were in the military office. The um. <laughs> Well, the my um the Ghanaian immigration office still morning, yeah. In the morning, um, my my family friend had made some calls. She had called some people to let us go, but we didn't know that she, she told me she was going to make some calls. But in the morning, she now that so one the they kept, they kept on saying that in the morning shift they are leaving by six, and when they leave, they want us over to the next shift, and that next shift person they don't know what they will do to us, but they will hand over our case to them, so they start processing our repatriation. I don't know if that repatriation word was new to this guy, because he kept on saying and saying, like, see if you just learn now. <laughs> I see that word was supposed to scare me. I'm like, guy, calm down. In my mind, like, man, calm down. So he, um, at some point, though, um, my roommate, um, sorry, my Ghanaian guardian, right, and she, she has spoken to me, and she told me that I should please calm down and please beg them and just, just let them hear me, let them just hear me out. So I was feeling very bad for her, not because I was most full of everything, anything that I've done, but I just went to the man and said, you know what? I agree that Manga Star and I have could not hear that we are stubborn. It's probably, blame it on the gun in the on the Nigerian blood, but probably just Nigerians. But um this is your Ghanaian sister, she hasn't slept since more and since yesterday. She's been calling, she's been trying to talk to you guys. Can you guys please the out? Not for my sake. Not because of me, because you obviously you can see that I'm I'm very I have coconut head, but please hear your sister out and for the sake of Christ, just let us go because of her. So he wasn't, he still was forming boom, but I knew that he was soft at that point because it was already morning. He was leaving soon. What, what was he going to be doing with us? The money we won't collect, never collect. I'm like, oh, oh God, do you get? So one military officer came in and then he, somebody he walked up to me and said that, okay, that they want to leave her and but what can we do about the, the money that they asked us? I said, I don't have. He says, so can't we make calls? Can't someone send us the money? And da, da, da. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Let me just make a call. So I called this my um, Ghanaian um, auntie. And she was like, she will pay. She, I mean, she was just willing to pay anything. So they called a certain amount of money. And she told them to send out their phone number. And then she did the mobile transfer to them. And then they let us go. That's how we got on the smaller Pakro, 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 Pakro bus. <laughs> now we got to Accra. 
and then we have to now pay from Accra to Kumasi, which was the route that if we are taking, we wouldn't have met this immigration guys in the first place. But now we had to go through that route from this place, and um, yeah, we got to Kumasi eventually. So yes, that was what happened. That was at my younger son. I slept in the Ghanaian immigration office till morning. And the first day in Ghana, we didn't get home. We slept inside the immigration office because we were arrested. Ah! <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's how it happened, though. Well, that's part two of the story. Part three of the story is how my Nigerian cards failed me. I told you guys I went to my two Nigerian cards and then there were money inside. There was money inside because I didn't travel with enough cash. I was hoping to just be withdrawing with my ATM card and enjoying life. But no, it didn't happen like that. I did not enjoy life. This Ghanaian trip was just giving me a headache, headache. From the first day to the last day, I was thinking, 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 thinking. I couldn't spend money because my cards were not paying. If you want to hear that gist of how I couldn't spend money because my cards were not paying, how I fell sick in Ghana, how um, things just went in here, in here, in here, in that trip. Sure. Let me know. That will be the third and concluding part of the story. Let me know in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. And once again, thank you for all the love on my channel. If you still haven't subscribed to my channel, now is a good time to do that. And until I see you in my next video, please remain in God. God bless you. Bye.